We will now move on to our schematic design for High School 12, Dr. Dupree. Yes, sir. Um, since we do not have a workshop this month or in August, we wanted to do an information item for the board on the design of High School 12. As you know, our standard practice is for the board to approve the schematic design before we move into the, the more construction design phase. So we're, we have with us this evening the architects that are going to be going through this. We're going to go through it in a little more detail than we often do in an elementary school <laughs> because it's much more complex, as you know. And you don't, we don't build high schools on a regular basis. And we have brand new ed specs. <coughs> so I think this will be a good discussion. And I'm going to turn it over, I guess, to Oscar to introduce the presenters. Thank you, Dr. Dupree. Uh, <clears throat> we are going to be presenting a very exciting project, which will be a, a high school, um, first one for me in uh, Fort Bend. And it's going to be a, a unique school. It's going to uh, be a, the largest one that I've uh, ever overseen. It uh, would also be the most expensive that I've ever overseen. But uh, over the years, since 92, prices have really jumped. So at this time, what I'd like to do is go ahead and turn it over to Tyron Kenny with DLR Group, and she will walk us through the schematic design. Good evening, Board of Trustees and Dr. Dupree. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to share the schematic design for High School 12 with you this evening. As Dr. Dupree mentioned, this is a significant moment for the school district. A new high school doesn't happen every day, so there has been a lot of opportunities for input. We have had uh, over 17 meetings during the schematic design process, meeting with all of the departments within the district as well as community, parents, and students. As Dr. Pre mentioned, this is the first time the new ed specs have been laid out on a site. So really allowing all those groups to see what that looks like, see how those relationships work, and getting input has been the, the reason for all of these meetings. So this is the site for High School 12 uh, on the left. Okay, on the left is uh, 521, and the Henry Ferndale Learning Center is to the left of the site as well. Heritage Rose Elementary is to the north of the site. So the yellow indicates the site is about 80 acres. There is a proposed road on the southern edge of the site. All of the kind of orangish color that you see is proposed residential. So there's a lot going on in this area, or proposed to go on in this area, and this high school will be responding to that growth. So this is the high-level layout of the design. I'll go through this in more detail as we get further into the presentation. There were a number of different design ideas presented. This was the one that everybody in the committees came together around. We call this the canyon. At the bottom, you can see the red is the main entry to the school. The blue are the academic areas laid out on the southern portion of the site. And then the elective areas are laid out on the north side of the site. What this does and what the committees really appreciated about this is it provides a very secure outdoor learning area that I'll go into a little bit more, uh, while also responding to the site appropriately. So you'll notice that the fields are oriented on the northwest side of the site, really keeping all of that activity and the lights away from any residential proposed. There is a significant parent drop-off on the southern edge of the site that enters into the main entry student parking on the west side of the site and also serving the athletic fields. And then on the east side is the bus drop-off. I'll show this a little bit later as well, but with that bus drop-off is a bus staging area, which also supports the marching band area, which is access from the fine arts in the purple. So we all know that safety and security is of utmost importance to our educators, our students, and our parents. We've been working with Chief Ryder from the very beginning so that safety is not an afterthought. It's really baked into the very beginning, the site planning. So what you see here is that the black outside line there is really the secure boundary of the school as a whole. And that courtyard space in the middle is, uh, is all secure so that the outdoor learning and the indoor learning can be more fluid but also secure. There's one primary entry that you see at the south part of the site. And then on the east and west are the secondary entries that will be open before school starts and after school, really allowing efficient circulation around the site, 
but once school starts, there's one single entry from the front that goes through a secure vestibule with all of your normal safety procedures. We've also talked about um, different shelter in place opportunities indicated in red, as well as some of your new call box locations that are in indicated in blue. One of the pieces of feedback we got is uh, on some of your current schools, there's a lot of congestion around circulation, and there are some areas where there's only one primary circulation path. So there was a real focus on having multiple paths to really have more efficiency during your passing periods, really break down this congestion. This is oftentimes areas where uh, instances can occur, behavior concerns can occur. So having multiple pathways throughout the building, really speeding up the, the passing process. So as I mentioned earlier, the, the primary or core academic spaces are on the southern side of the building. Your new ed spec has a learning community component. There are four of these that you see kind of marching along the southern side of the building. These can be organized as grade level or they can be organized as content area. So it really provides flexibility over the years for whoever is leading this facility. On the north side of the site, you have athletics on the west side and fine arts on the east side. They're really kind of the anchors of the project so that they're easily accessible for evening activities and after hours uh, events. In the middle, you have your dining commons and your CTE. They're kind of the heart of the campus spaces that most of your students will be using. So they're right there in the center. Upstairs, you, there is a second floor of this building, which is your learning communities. Uh, pulled up to the second floor. The orange piece that you see is the library. The library actually bridges across from the north uh, side to the south side, so really becomes this connector piece, really bringing everybody together in that library piece. So this is a blow up of one of the learning communities. So this looks a little bit different than your current schools. The ed spec really calls for all of the learning to be integrated. So what you'll notice in the green are spaces specifically for your students in special education. Those are provided within each learning community. So they're really integrated with all of the learning that's going on. The blue spaces are your classrooms as well as a multi-purpose space. That's a larger space that allows different types of learning approaches. There are science labs in each learning community on both floors. And then there's some open collaboration space. This is a new space type as well. This is an overview of uh, the outside of the building, kind of the bird's eye view, if you will. That's the front entry that you're seeing, kind of uh, leading from the parent and visitor parking there. Learning communities, again, you see elements repeating in each learning community, so we're really looking at having some efficiencies with those repeating elements. Again, this is a view of that kind of main entry, both marking the entry, also having a canopy that leads students into and parents and visitors into that main entry space. This is a view from the east entry, which is uh, your fine arts entry. So again, having similar components with the canopy, that's also where the bus drop off happens in the morning, so having some covered entry there. And then the west entry is your athletics entry. Each of these spaces on the east and west have a kind of a courtyard component that could be used for evening. One of the things I, I didn't mention at the beginning is this is the, the first major building in this area. So it really has the opportunity to build and create community in this area. So really making these spaces that welcome the community in, but also provide the kind of secure boundaries for the school is really a focus for this design. And then this is a view of the courtyard space. So there have been a lot of discussions around how this space will be used. Uh, there's obviously been a lot of discussion around shaded areas and covered areas so that in inclement weather, uh, those spaces can be used or they'll be protected. There is um, indoor space, hallways connecting the north and south side, as well as uh, outdoor covered areas. And then this is a view from the learning community on the ground floor, kind of connecting to the second floor. And then another view from the dining commons. This is from kind of the CTE area, looking down into the dining commons. You can see the courtyard off to the left there. So there were a couple of things uh, that I didn't mention on the athletics and the fine arts. I know there was some discussion back in October of last year around 
kind of equity and the allocation of square footages with athletics. That was reviewed with uh, design and construction and the athletics department and all that was kind of reallocated before we received the ed specs. Uh, we have worked very closely with athletics department and there was a decision to, let me go back really quickly here. So what you see at the top is an athletic field house, and then at the, the lower portion of that are the three gyms and additional athletic areas. So, so what that is is really indoor court spaces, male or female, are all interior as well as uh, PE spaces. And then the field house is your true field sports, whether that be male or female in the field house. Uh, like I said, those spaces are reallocated, so it's more or less equal. Uh, there are shared spaces, both the weight rooms, laundry, all of that, that's kind of centralized, and then the genders are more separate for the kind of control and uh, ease of management. Sharon, can I interrupt? We, yep. in the presentation we have in front of us, it's got this blown up a little bit. Did we, do we That's have what that? I was expecting to show, and I, it didn't come up, so that's why I'm kind of talking through it. Okay. Um, we may have just, we, well this was a late, late change today, so we may have not got the right presentation. Yeah, it's loaded. not, it's okay. not what I have, unfortunately. So the, board, the board does have the blown up slides, so. Okay, so if you look at the blown up slide, that is what I am talking through at the moment. <laughs> um, the next blown up slide, I believe, is the fine arts area. Um, and the, the fine arts, one of the things we wanted to, a couple of things we wanted to, yes, that one, thank you. Um, <laughs> There are a couple of things I wanted to point out on that. At the top, you see the band spaces. This hallway that you see right below the band spaces, that leads directly out to the marching area that I indicated earlier. Uh, at the, the bottom of where the auditorium is, that's the main entry for that auditorium space. And then the area just to the left of the auditorium is the dance hall. So this is a space that there was a lot of discussion on that being located with athletics or fine arts. It, it is a fine arts uh, credit, and so it's located with the fine arts group. It is right on the main circulation path, connecting the southern portion to the northern portion, so there's a lot of transparency and kind of display of dance right on that main circulation path. Other than that, I will open it up to questions. <coughs> Mrs. James. <coughs> thank you. Okay, thank you for um, thank you for that presentation, and I'm um, very excited about this. And building a high school is a big deal. I've been on the board for a pretty long time now, and this is we added a wing to one, but building a new high school is it feels like a mountain we're climbing. So financially and <laughs> uh, in every way. So I'm excited uh, to thank you for sharing about uh, and the um, uh, uh, sharing about the athletics. That was something that I brought up. I felt there was a lot of inequity in the initial presentation that we heard from about the ed specs. So I'm glad that was straightened out and I think this looks great. In the blown up version I have, I see assignment of different portions of the building to girls, the different girls sports and boys sports. Um, I see two weight rooms, one available maybe indoors with the P, near the PE classes, uh, and then one uh, to be uh, in the field house for the field sports. So I, it just seems like all of those things got addressed really well. So thank you for, to the athletic department for that and also to, to, to your team for getting that integrated. I also I had a question also about the um, the fine arts space there in the picture there the, on the far right where the dark uh, I think that's an auditorium yes. and how many people does that seat and what's the kind of uh, size I guess and then are there restrooms near there I can kind of yes see but I was just trying to see is it sloped? Is it too level? What trying to understand a little bit more about that space? So it, it provides seating for 850 audience members. 
You enter from the back of the auditorium and you come around on the sides. You, that center aisle there is all at grade level, so that's all accessible, if you will, at grade level there. From that center point, it slopes down and then behind you slopes up. So if you turn back around, you kind of go up from there. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. And then the lower left, sort of the dark purple, would be the restrooms, and that's still on that main, uh, main walkway level. So there's a lobby at the the very bottom of the auditorium is the lobby, and then the there are restrooms and a concession area right there off of that space. And then beyond that are the the secure doors that would be closed so that the public wouldn't move beyond those. Okay, so it can be can be blocked off if you have a performance or an assembly or, or some a parent meeting or something. Right, and actually right around the corner from those restrooms is the black box. So all of that is accessible from that lobby space. So if there's a performance in the black box, that's accessible as well. Okay, that's great. So, so thank you. Well, I, um, and then you said, and then from just to remind me the from that entrance point yep oh okay that's where the so where can you can someone point on there where the entrance point would be to that building and i see the or to that part of the building and then i see where the marching manor because i did ask about that parks or practices where the bus ramp is which is a really smart idea Bus drop off comes in here, goes around that way. So this is the canopy for the drop off here. The transportation has indicated that in the morning the buses will come through the loop and just drop off as they arrive, but in the afternoon the buses will stage right here and then the students always know where to go because they're always in the same spot. So this staging area will only be used in that particular time, which is very limited during the, the pickup or the drop off uh, when school lets out. So the rest of the time, this is available both for marching band, but also for JROTC. So it can serve both purposes and JROTC is right here. They actually are able to march. Uh, there's some outdoor covered space there if they need to, uh, again, in inclement weather, or they can march in the the band marching area as well. Okay, and if uh, community members were coming to a performance in, in the auditorium, how would they enter the building? They would enter right here. All of this parking would be available. In addition, if, that, if they need overflow parking, that would be there, but then they enter directly into the lobby here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. James. Mr. Rice? Thank you very much. I really love the way the school looks. I think it's really great. A um, couple questions I have. <clears throat> how many square feet is this facility and how many students is it designed to serve? Right. So as was mentioned, this is a bigger square footage than your previous schools. It's at uh, approximately 485,000 square feet. 485. Mm -hmm. And it is designed to accommodate 2,800 students and, but the core is designed for 3,000 students. So the okay. core spaces yeah. being all the shared spaces are designed for 3,000. The classroom spaces are designed for 2,800, but those can be added easier than the core spaces. Okay. In the courtyard, I, I particularly like that courtyard. And from the rendering, it looks like some of the surfaces are paved or impervious. And then you have some grass. Is that going to be synthetic turf? So we haven't gotten that far along in terms of that um, decision. We do have a requirement for fire truck access in that courtyard from one side. Uh, so we have to design in that ability. Uh, but it is something that we're in exploration right now. This is schematic design. There have been discussions around kind of the desired uses. That is something we may discuss, but we haven't we haven't gotten that far yet. <coughs> I've seen that done in some courtyards before, and it worked really well, simply because you can walk on it right after it rains, and 
you, you don't really have to maintain it very much and it's it's there so um, and then energy saving uh, some some ideas are we're we using LED lighting pretty much everywhere right. the classrooms the fields the parking lots and the courtyard being a safe and secure area do you have some sort of ornamental fencing that is secure right. to keep people out so when I showed the the safety diagram with that big black line we're really mm -hmm. thinking of the the main edges as part of the building so they're really uh, more uh, hefty I guess you would say you know not not really viewed as a fence but really viewed as an extension of the building at those edges we do then have fencing around the fields and things like that. But yes, that is being very much designed as part of the building as well as part of the entry sequence since you have the athletic entry and the fine arts entry there as well. Okay. Um, it look, yeah, it looks very, very nice. And uh, if all goes well, when would we begin construction? Completion is for August 2020, as you know, or for when are, when are we beginning? August of 2020? No, in, in, the, June, in the June board cycle, uh, the board approved the construction manager at risk for this campus. We are now working with them to help establish the schedule. We'll determine the phasing of when we'll be able to begin construction. Uh, we are going to, as stated with um, the last board meeting, is that we are going to accept GMP at 75%, which we are hopeful that that means that we can start that construction um, early in order to meet the deadline for moving. Okay, and the cost per square foot, the budgeted construction cost per square foot is? 265. 265, excellent, thank you. Mrs. James. Sorry, I just had one for other additional question, and I you may have said it. Is this um, expected to be a lead building, and it's a lead certified building? Yes, it, it's expected to be lead certified. We're aiming for lead silver so that we have some wiggle room if we need that. Great, thank you. Mrs. Hilliger. I love the building. It, I was telling Jim, this looks like a little college campus. It, it sure beats the high school that I grew up in. So, um, <laughs> but so you have to excuse me. I, I don't know all the terminology, but as I was thinking about when you were you were just stating the cost of per square footage to build, and then you said um, something about seventy five percent. What was that? Could you explain that to me? Yes, the guaranteed maximum price. The contractor who we um, actually selected and entered negotiations with in the June board cycle is working with the design team. They will be uh, performing pre-construction services, which means that they're going to be reviewing the documents with the design team, working hand in hand with us as we produce the documents in order to uh, make sure that we maintain within budget. The GMP stands for Guaranteed Maximum Price. And we will be coming back to the board with the guaranteed maximum price uh, while the design team finishes up the drawings. They will be coming in at 75%. Okay. Th so does that mean that um, no matter what the cost of, the, of this particular um, building, we're guaranteed a certain price for whether it be design, architectures, whatnot, so the cost doesn't increase if the cost of the, for like architectures, if we, if the if the construction increases, or does it decrease? Do we get any savings if the construction doesn't cost as much? What kind of what kind of contract do we have? <coughs> I, can, I can answer that. So, once we come to you with a guaranteed maximum price, the only way that the price would increase is if we actually make changes after that point uh, to the design. Uh, otherwise, that is the maximum price that would go in there, and then because it is uh, a CM at risk, then it's auditable, so we can go back and we audit the, the uh, final price, and what we found in all the others that we've done is that we have received some money back at the end of those uh, projects. So if the, co if the cost itself to build is less than what we predicted, we will get funds back? That is correct. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Mrs. Haliger. Mr. Rice. 
Thank you very much for this presentation. I'm all, I, I too am excited, so this is big stuff. Great design, thank you very much.